G'day guys, Jeff here, and yes, Operation Missing in Action, that's been me. I've been away uh, for a very long time, just uh, some travel, uh, bought a house, so I'll get into that a little bit later, um, and where I've been. But, um, you know, without the, the games are coming out now. So with the games coming out now, and for the fact that I used to rip it up with uh, some other good players in Battlefield, um, I am definitely going to bring out a Battlefield 3 series. I've been playing the beta, as you can see, and I've got a few solid tips for this video. I suggest you stick around. Battlefield games are long, uh, with the YouTube's upload limits uh, lifted quite a bit. Um, I'll be able to bring it to you. Uh, I mean, it's not terribly long, but there are some very good tips here that you uh, might want to take, uh, take note of. So, uh, where have I been? Um, I went to Peru and I did the Inca Trail, so you may have known that, so I took an overseas vacation and uh, the Inca Trail was fantastic. We actually trekked the trail, um, you know, did have porters to take our uh, backpacks and things like that, but uh, the, the trek was fantastic. Uh, we covered 35 kilometers uh, in three days, uh, roughly, and slept on the Andes Mountains uh, in tents and whatnot, and it was just unbelievable. I uh, definitely recommend it to people. Um, outside of that, I recently uh, just got back from Croatia and Serbia, so I went there for a uh, quick holiday and also a wedding. A mate got married. Uh, he was a New Zealander that actually helped move his business over to um, over to Serbia, and he was there for the girls, but eventually he got married, so, you know, there you go. Um, as for uh, recently, um, as in the last month, I actually uh, bought a house and I've been extremely busy uh, knocking down the kitchen, remodeling and all that sort of uh, fun slash boring stuff depending on what you look at it. Uh, but, you know, that's, uh, that's consuming the majority of my time, but I am now trying to put time into uh, Battlefield 3 and that's why I'm going to bring you these videos. For the old guys who have seen my uh, Battlefield 3 videos, I apologize in advance for some tactics that you may see me repeat um, and or discuss, uh, talk about, uh, but outside of that, uh, for the new guys, I will be going over some of the fundamentals of uh, Battlefield 3 because the mechanics are different from other first-person shooters and it's good to know these things. So, uh, number one here, the M320 launcher that I was using, it's only good f for destruction, as in destroying um, objectives that, uh, that are destructible in the Frostbite engine, or by uh, finishing off an enemy that you've shot and injured uh, significantly. One part of uh, what I was doing there is you, you, when you shoot someone in Battlefield 3, because the spawn system's on squad, meaning that you can spawn on your teammate, that it uh, you need to make sure you clear not one person, but you just don't run gun ho after shooting one person. You got to see if there was a squad spawn near them uh, or just as they died. Uh, just going to Bravo then, one of the fantastic upgrades for Battlefield 3 is the fact you can see how far along the disarm or arm process is for a person. The arming is so quick, so it's more about disarming. Stopping it here, uh, we all like our red men. Now, in Battlefield 3, uh, you want to minimize your one-on-one -on -one engagements front-on. Uh, so where the red man is, you do not want to be engaging people there. Instead, you want to be uh, looking to where that red man was, but actually trying to shoot people on the 45 or, you know, even at best, 70-degree uh, angle uh, sideways, like an L-shaped attack. So they're going forward worrying about the people who are fronting their one-on-one, -on -one, and you take them out from the side. That's definitely the best in Battlefield. I mean, it applies to other first-person shooters as well, but for Battlefield, it's a golden tip. So I am looking left every once in a while um, for where my front one-on-one -on -one would be. That's why I'm using a little bit of the tree cover so I'm harder to see. And uh, you definitely want to get side shots in like that. Battlefield 3, uh, the beta anyway, is not terribly lag sensitive uh, on my experience. There are issues with the map, like uh, there's a lot of falling through the map and whatnot, especially around near the alpha plan in this first stage here. Um, only you can only play rush at the moment in this map for those who haven't started the beta but I definitely recommend it if you uh, plan again on the Battlefield 3 it's going to be a fantastically uh, massive game and I'm really really looking forward to it I mean I, you know, I, I see these two guys here uh, I'm trying to sneak around to get the uh, side shot to them but they saw me and um, you know that that's just a fail on my behalf um, but yeah, Battlefield 3 is going to be fantastically huge, so I definitely want to get together with my old crew, uh, like John and um, uh, as owner and Hypermole, and rip shit up. Um, I'm actually going to be buying it for the Xbox and not the PlayStation this time around. Um, there was a lot of requests for people to uh, play on the Xbox, and I generally find that uh, you know it's 
it's easier to get bigger matches or quicker matches uh, that are full on the Xbox. So I definitely want to uh, have my Battlefield ex experience there. And uh, maybe even get uh, Stoneface Lock and a few of the other guys into uh, to my lobby so we can uh, absolutely dominate as a squad and, and bring you guys some tips. The perk system in here is a little bit interesting. Uh, you could call it a perk system for want of a better word, but uh, you get specializations or, or um, you can customize what you uh, have as a specialization, whether you're good at uh, whether suppressive fire is not as intensely uh, affecting you, whether you can create a bigger suppression of fire effect. You get sprint, squad, squad sprint, ammo, uh, flak jacket, you know, or flak, and the, uh, there's a few others in there. I'll go over them in other videos, um, but at the moment you can take a you can press up on your on your uh, controller um, buttons, uh, the up button on your controllers to actually see the information on that uh, customization. So I recommend you test it out and use the beta to go through all the weapons and uh, attachments. Some attachments are good for some weapons, some suck, whether it's a visibility issue or uh, or whatnot. Here's a, an example of shooting sideways on the person and uh, then shooting back so on, the, on the squad spawn for the person I missed. One tactic I actually like doing here is uh, when you shoot someone, I fall back sometimes, and what? Because they see a kill cam, they see me running back towards my home base, and then when the kill cam's timed out, I then uh, move back into an alternate position. So then they have two options. One is a revenge kill on where I killed them from, a revenge kill going back to where I came from, and uh, or you know, obviously just ignoring me completely. So. Uh, uh, yeah, for the fact that two out of three is a revenge kill, um, I want to put myself in a position that I can advantageously see. Oh, that's uh, un unfortunate. When the spawns uh, happen like that, and you're uh, to the left or behind them, that's the best way to take out a squad, uh, obviously. And um, I've noticed in this beta particularly, you need to really wait until one or two of the people are lined up for the shot. So you want to maneuver yourself so you can shoot through one person into the other and uh, maximize your opportunity to take out the entire squad. Um, yeah, so with uh, with being tricky, I said two out of three is a revenge kill. I, I generally find it about 60%, 66% of the time. Um, someone you shoot in battlefield, they do want to come back to your position. So you want to make it your you want to make it to your advantage and place yourself in a position where you're going to be able to see them approach your old vicinity or position and then you can take them out from a new location and you can rinse and repeat I've got some videos or I actually I only just started recording uh, but I, I set the recorder up in the new house um, but I've got some games here where uh, I've literally owned the guy uh, you know eight nine kills in a row just because they keep going back to where I was uh, previously another tip I like is uh, what I've done here is that I, I like to push forward on the edge of the map and after making a one or, or two kills, I then actually um, reverse course and try to come in on the flank of the people who have passed me. And by doing that, that actually gives me um, obviously the advantage that uh, they're worried about the people in front of them and I've come around behind. That's what she said. Um, here's a nice little rock for the beta once you've pushed forward. The goal on this stage of the map, I think, or the, as a defender, the best opportunity is once you've um, clashed at the, in the initial clash when everyone sprints to up to the objectives uh, for the attack or defense, once you've pushed forward, you then actually... Um, uh, this guy should not have done that. When you're getting shot at and it's from uh, your flank or sides, you want to go instant prone, especially if you're near a cover like I was and he just uh, was trying to be smart with the handgun and didn't shoot it quick enough and uh, or, or didn't or aimed at my lower body and uh, he was an easy takeout from the spinner. So you want to make sure your sensitivity is up enough that you can spin around like that for the shot. Uh, that definitely makes it worth it. Uh, one tick technique that I just did there that is good is I use the grenades for three purposes in Battlefield. One is to take out uh, a group of enemy in a small, small area. You could also take out walls with it. Two is that if I'm stuck in a firefight and I need to reload, I'll throw the grenade in their general vicinity. Hopefully they're worried about the grenade rather than shooting at me while I'm reloading and then I can pop up for the uh, final kill. And uh, lastly is that you can, uh, with the grenades, you can actually, um, if you're in a position where you've got two vulnerability points, like a doorway or whatnot, you want to throw the grenade out one door uh, from a timing perspective and then look towards the opposite door uh, or area. For doing that, that throwing that grenade, 
you listen out for the voices. Uh, if you're on the American team, you listen for foreign accent. If you're on the accent, you know, the accented or foreigner team, you listen out for, listen out for the American accent. Um, because you hear them say stuff like "shit, I'm under fire" or "holy shit, there's a grenade" or or whatnot. So you definitely want to use that to your advantage and uh, um, listen out for those voices. Uh, good quality headset definitely makes sense in battlefield. I've noticed in this beta, they've uh, balanced a lot of a lot of the sounds. Um, uh, sorry, a lot of the options out have been balanced, but as part of that, the sounds. Um, are only good when there's no gunfire on near you. Um, by that I mean that uh, if you you hear someone running a lot, uh, like very easily, if you've actually uh, don't have people shooting around you. But once people start shooting, it's very hard to differentiate who's who's doing what. Um, so you have to obviously have to look at the minimap. Now I actually did see a guy on the uh, the minimap here and. Uh, I'm trying to find where that guy is. You see the red marker there. Uh, I know he's to my right somewhere. Um, he happened to pop down in this in this field here. When you're on the second stage, one of the things I absolutely love doing is playing the uh, ticket slayer position, which, uh, like Battlefield Bad Company 2, is where you push up into their spawn, one or two people, hopefully from the same squad so you can respawn back. And as long as they're not getting past for the arming, you definitely want to bring yourself up for... There's the insta-prone result from getting shot at from a position I didn't understand. You definitely want to um, put yourself in a position where you can uh, slay some tickets um, from their spawn and uh, I don't consider that uh, cheating in any fashion or whatnot. People say it's a cheap tactic uh, but not so. I mean it, they're spawning all around you. They can take out one or two uh, you know, one or two people very easily. It's just that one of the common things that people bitch about is that they um, when they spawn in they expect to sprint straight away. Uh, so people go, oh, I'll spawn in at the deployment and I'll start sprinting straight away to get back into the action. So their ignorance of um, you know understanding the battlefield, looking at, uh, listening to the sounds, um, looking at where you spawn in, especially with the, this, the spawning system on battlefield, you um, need to understand your environment. And by understanding your environment, you can you know, take care of the threats or you know spawn in an area that's not going to be uh, dangerous. Um, so you know. People uh, you know, uh, uh, focused on one thing, singly focused, or you know, only have their, their only goal is to get back into the fight. So it's at their detriment. I really thought I got this guy here. There was a lot of a lot of shots in the head there. Um, and he threw a grenade that I got. To, I'm trying to run backwards here and jump over the rock, but uh, I got stuck and the grenade got me because I was hurt. Um, but yeah, because their single-mindedness uh, wants them to get back in the battle, use that to your advantage. Another easy way of shooting people, I spoke about shooting them on the 45 or the 70. Uh, that was my mistake there. I actually heard a shotgun blast. And whenever you hear a shotgun, uh, you want to, and you think it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one battle, you should use alternate weapons like grenades or, or whatnot, or handgun even, to uh, to try to win that fight. So that was my fault. But um, when you are approaching people one-on-one, -on -one, the best advantage in Battlefield is to get them while they're sprinting. Uh, so if you're in full sprint like I am now, the best person um, to shoot me head on is someone who's ready to shoot or is walking because uh, the aim down sights is super quick um, especially for red dots and the ACOGs uh, you definitely want to um, do that do that as uh, put yourself in a position where you're catching people in a full sprint uh, for the one on one, -on -one fights um, so with here I'm, I'm taking a look at the minimap and actually determining at what point can we push up now we're not having any arming issues uh, you know some groups really quick to arm and if that's the case I do not recommend what I'm doing now uh, I only recommend pushing up when you want to uh, you know, go up there with your team and uh, be the ticket slayer I mean they have uh, just over 50 tickets left that actually isn't too long in the scheme of things I mean it's, uh, it's almost halfway uh, depending on where they started at um, you know, usually the hundred mark when they uh, breach a, um, a stage uh, he's obviously a new player because he's uh, trying to go over the top, which is what it looks like when you're uh, actually um, <laughs> going. Here's a nice double, an example of uh, people being uh, behind each other so I can uh, go full auto and uh, shoot in that general direction. When re re with reviving people, I find you have to be a lot closer and you actually have to revive on them. One of the great features of Battlefield is you can choose not to accept the revive. And also, if you revive, uh, if you get revived and then you get shot immediately, um, and uh, you accept the revive and you get shot immediately, then that gives you um, 
Uh, it won't revive you again, so you, you can't just do it over and over again. So the person who's reviving can't whore out his revival points. There was two examples of shooting someone from the side, shooting someone in a full sprint. It definitely puts you in an advantage. Um, you want to be mindful of that that uh, breath noise that you make when you hit 100% health, because uh, I find that um, when you do that, you um, when we people play Battlefield, it only takes one or two shots to kill them. It's because they've uh, artificially uh, entered the battle. Well, they've incorrectly entered the battle when they haven't been at full health. Um, there are times for doing that, like uh, for MCOM, station uh, defense or attack, you know, just to hold back the attackers a little bit more. Uh, one thing you can do with this... Um, <laughs> one thing you could do with the uh, laser sights and tack lights, you might have seen the hot, little hot tip, but you can push up on your D-pad and it will actually uh, remove it. I do see this guy on the minimap and I'm out of ammo and I want his gun and uh, by the time I see him he's actually saw me and uh, away we go. Um, the classes that I like, let's talk about weapons for a second. The 416 I think is quite good, you want to, you chuck a uh, red dot on there um, or a hollow. Uh, the hollows get a little bit muted when you're in the caves here but uh, the tack lights and laser lights are actually really interesting because I found, uh, you know, just through my own testing that if someone's shining a tack light on you even if you shoot directly in the middle of that tack light, you're not actually getting optimal hits on the person. Um, I'm not sure if Battlefield 3 randomizes your hit spread, your hit pattern. Uh, that'd be really interesting to check out when Den Kersen you know, does some reviews of the game code or whatnot, uh, or you know, people determine things or information's leaked. But um, I definitely think that um, when the tack light is shining at you, if you shoot dead center of the tack light, you, it's not an optimal hit range. You want to actually shoot to the left or to the right of the tack light to get the hits. I find that uh, you want to shoot slightly to the right of center of the tack light to start getting hits on the person. I think uh, DICE uh, have built that into the game so that when the tack, tack light is shined at you, that it does randomize your hit spray when you're shooting directly at it because, you know, what, what else is the advantage of the tack light? It, it only blinds a little bit. I mean, it's annoying. It blinds a little bit, but it gives away your position. So I think they did put in some randomized, um, you know, spread. So as your bullets go down the line, instead of being perfectly accurate. I think they spread out around the tack light to uh, minimize the impact damage. But you know, that's just uh, that's just from what I believe I've seen. So uh, you know, I, I would like to know what it actually is. And if you guys have any com comments on how you think it works, please leave a comment. Um, outside of that, uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with pushing into the spawn to end the tickets. Uh, and that's what we're doing now. The game's almost over. Um, picked up a few good kills, there's a couple of good good tactics there and uh, hopefully I can uh, tee up with uh, the guys and uh, get our original crew together. There is a problem with audio in that um, I found you can t talk to other people in your team but you can't talk to people in your squad so uh, it, it's, it's very on and off. Um, even if people who have open NAT types it's still pretty on and off uh, as in They'll be in your squad, sometimes you can hear them, and then all audio between your squad stops. If you leave squad and they leave squad, you can talk to them again. Um, so when you do hear people talking, they're usually other squad leaders or in other squads or whatnot. So um, that'll be interesting. I would like to know what Battlefield, uh, what DICE and EA are doing with uh, squad leaders, because it would be good if you could push something on your controller or two-button combination and actually voice chat to other squad leaders. That would be fantastic, but I don't think they're doing it. We'll see. Anyway, guys, uh, ended that match. Uh, I missed what the KD was, but I think it was fairly significant, um, you know, for the the role that I played. And uh, until next time, guys, see ya.